This weekend, Kevin Feige formally announced the release plan for the first slate of Disney Plus Marvel TV shows. So today I'm gonna stop and rank all five shows based off my excitement level from the least to the most. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. If you can relate, you're probably in the right place and consider clicking that subscribe button. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of these five shows based off your kind of anticipation for them. We're going to disagree. That's awesome. Let's just keep it friendly. Before I get started, can I give you my general feelings on these Disney Plus shows? On the one hand, I'm so excited that they're doing shows that really tie into the movies. Like, I love the Marvel Netflix. Netflix shows, but really those were a pocket universe with only superficial connections to the films. And then you have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I haven't watched as much of, that has more connections, but still very distant from what happens in the movies. Here, there are characters from the movies in the leads, and Kevin Feige is saying, no, there are big ties. That is awesome. I'm excited to see how that actually plays out. On the other hand, I'm a little bit disappointed that for the most part what they're doing is they're selling us on the movies just by saying, it's Loki, the TV show. It's Hawkeye, the TV show. What they're not doing is pitching me on a story, a premise for a TV show to kind of draw me in to get my excitement based off of an actual story. So that's a little bit disappointing to me. So on the one hand, I'm, I'm holding off a little bit on getting too excited until I see those trailers and then my excitement sliders can go all the way up to 11. With that said, let's get started. Easily coming in last place is Loki. Now. I love Loki inside of these movies as a villain, as the anti-hero, as the brother that's so conflicted in his relationship with Thor. Love Tom Hiddleston inside of these movies. I only wish him the best. I want him to get time in the spotlight as the star. What I do not like is that they keep killing off Loki and bringing him back and killing off Loki and bringing him back and really killing off Loki and then altering the timeline to bring him back. It just doesn't feel like a good, it, it just feels so cheap and, and comic booky in the bad way. The stuff that comic books do that undermine their credibility, that's kind of what this feels like to me. That they got a star like, oh, he'll agree to do it. People like Loki, let's give him a show. Rather than really having a story that makes sense in light of what has come beforehand. Maybe they found a story reason that makes sense moving forward, but it really doesn't make sense of what happened in Infinity War, what happened in Thor The Dark World, what happened in the first Thor movie. It just feels like such a cheap gimmick to bring him back. And likewise, a big gigantic part of the appeal of the Loki character is that relationship with Thor. And what they haven't said is, oh yeah, Thor's the other lead in the show. They haven't done that. And so the idea of Loki on his own, I'm not really even sure how I feel about that in general. So this one to me, it, I have so many reservations about this show based off what they have revealed thus far. Thus it's easily in last place for me. In fourth place is WandaVision, the show about the relationship between Scarlet Witch and Vision. Uh, I'll start off on the negative on this one, and then I've got some pretty big positives on the latter half of how I'll talk about this one. But right off the bat, I think this is just a, a terrible name for a TV show. It sounds like a failed video game system from like 1982 or something like that. <laughs> I don't know where they're going with just like, let's take their name and just smash them together. Let's go with it. I don't like the name at all. Beyond that, uh, they don't feel like characters that lend themselves well to a TV show. And what I mean by that is that certain characters are just so powerful that the things that kind of make them distinctly interesting as a superhero is their big gigantic power set. And those are expensive. They're not something you can easily do with a TV show. Likewise, certain characters have a really nice rogues gallery. Other people don't have the best rogues gallery. And when you take someone as powerful as Scarlet Witch, add in the mix Vision, and who are they, what are they supposed to do with their superpowers inside of a show like that? That seems weird to me that they're the ones that get a TV show, as opposed to characters that don't have superpowers. They can easily battle all kinds of other human characters. We'll get to that later on in this list. In which case, Immediately when they said Scarlet Witch or Vision, it was like, oh, more of them, that's cool. I enjoy their characters. I don't know how that lends itself to a TV show. And then, of course, Vision is dead. So when they kill off Vision in one movie and then announce he's going to be 
in a TV show about the relationship between two characters, your immediate reaction is like, that's that's kind of weird what they're doing with that. So this one, it's tough for me to know how to feel about it because I don't understand what the show is, in which case, once again, like I said before, it feels like they're pitching me the show based off, look, Wanda, Vision, they get a TV show. Awesome, right? Well, I don't know. You need to sell me on what the actual concept is. Those are the negatives on this one. On the positive side to it, they also said that Monica Rambeau is going to be a major character inside of the show, which that gets really interesting. If you don't know, Monica Rambeau is the little girl from Captain Marvel, uh, um, the, the co-pilot who had the little girl inside of it. She's now all grown up because that movie took place back in the 90s, so now she's going to be, what, 30, 35 years old or something like that, in which case she can have a very different role inside these films. Also, Monica Rambeau inside the comics is one of the other renditions of Captain Marvel. All that makes for some very interesting setup for what they could be, how these shows could tie into the grander Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's where I start to get really excited about this one. And then they also said that whatever happens in this show with Scarlet Witch leads to her character being inside of Doctor Strange uh, and the <laughs> Multiverse of Madness, the Doctor Strange 2 that's also been announced. I did a video about that. You can check it out right up here. And so that's really interesting as well that they're using this series as a prequel to that movie that's what I really want to see inside these movies uh, Wanda getting her own TV show I just don't know what that means tying it together a shared television movie universe I like the sound of all of that real quick before I give you my top three remember to share your ranking down below in the comment section also as I just mentioned yesterday I put out a video where I talked about all of the movies of phase four plus blade I kind of gave my ranking just like this video except talking about the movies you can check that out right up here once this video is done in third place is Falcon and the Winter Soldier now these are characters to me that feel like they lend themselves really nicely to a TV show because they are played by great actors that can lead a show like this, but their characters aren't so powerful that they have to battle cosmic beings invading the planet or something like that. No, they can be spies, agents going on missions that lends itself to kind of the nature of TV shows, the more complex storytelling that you can do with an eight hour or six hour arc that you would do with a series like that. All of that starts to get me excited about the storytelling potential that you could do with these characters. Give them more time in the spotlight as the star, not just the sidekick. Add into the mix where they kind of ended things in Endgame, the shield getting passed to Falcon. What exactly does that mean that this is called Falcon and Winter Soldier win? We know that Falcon is now has Captain America's shield and Steve has said, hey, I want you to kind of continue the mantle. Anthony Mackie has said that he's done a fitting for the Captain America suit. There's a lot of things inside of that that actually get me very much excited for a TV show like this. And then beyond that, they've said that Daniel Brohl is returning as Zemo, kind of embracing the character's more comic booky roots just a little bit more. If you don't know, that's the villain from Captain America Civil War. He'll be making a return as well as Emily Van Camp, also from Captain America Civil War. So several of these characters kind of filling it out and you start to understand a story, how this kind of kind of play out, expand the universe that they've already crafted and kind of add some new layers in depth inside of it. So for me, this sounds like a TV show that I immediately go, yeah, that, that sounds like a pretty cool little show that I think I'd really enjoy. Our runner up is What If. This is an animated TV show basically running a whole bunch of what if scenario? So for example, what if Peggy Carter got the super soldier serum instead of Steve, Steve Rogers? So they do an episode about Peggy Carter as Captain America. And that's what the whole show will be. Kind of these what if scenarios. If you take kind of the key element inside of one of these stories or one of these characters arcs and you turn it on its head and swap out the details. And this is based off a long running kind of famous comic book series. And they're all kind of these weird, interesting stories. And what they're doing for this is they're getting the actual voice talent from the movies to come back and join in. The one that I got most excited about was uh, Michael Douglas because it starts running through my brain of like, we can actually do like a potentially Michael Douglas, Hank Pym, Ant-Man inside of this animated universe. My brain started going like, oh, I would love to see an Ant-Man, uh, Hank Pym animated movie on Disney Plus. That would be amazing with uh, Michael Douglas with Michelle Pfeiffer doing their characters. That would be awesome. But anyway, that's my own little what if scenario of what they could do the idea of them taking the actors doing what if scenarios just seems like a fun episodic show. But 
easily in first place for me is Hawkeye. Jeremy Renner seems like one of these guys over the last 10 years that he's been on the cusp of being like full-blown Hollywood A-lister, but hasn't quite broken through the ceiling yet. So they put him in the Avengers, but he's kind of a bad guy, and he's always kind of been the like the second fiddle tier of our Avengers, not getting his time in the spotlight all that much. Then he almost replaced Mission uh, like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. They almost replaced uh, Matt Damon <laughs> inside of the Bourne films, but none of that fully happened. Here, finally, Hawkeye gets to take the lead, his own story arc, and focus in on him, and Jeremy Renner gets to fully be the star inside of this thing of his own deal. Adding it to the mix, they've been talking about it for months and kind of confirmed it that Kate Bishop will be kind of a, a, a major element of these storylines. Kate Bishop is like kind of the person that kind of took on the mantle of Hawkeye inside the comic books, and so it's kind of talking about how Clint will be passing the baton to her. This will be his protege, kind of passing on the best of him to this Kate Bishop character. And they've also said that they're going to be exploring his time as Ronin inside of the, the series. So you kind of dig in deep to this guy that has been the hero and he's been a very dark uh, Punisher-esque vigilante with a sword and bow and arrow. And so that all of that sounds great to me. There, I don't know the exact tone of what this series will be, but if they do it right, the idea of him kind of passing the mantle, the idea of sp exploring this character that went through a dark phase, there's a lot of things that you could do that obviously not, not near as dark, but a Logan-esque type storyline of this person processing through their past, their failures, a lot of very cool things that you could do with that with a superhero modern era of... Uh, Western or samurai type story inside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't know that that's what they're going for, but in my brain with what they've told me, that's what I can get excited about. So I'm very excited for Jeremy Renner, very excited to get to see and dig deep into the Hawkeye character. So easily for me, the one that I'm like, I can't wait to see the series is Hawkeye at number one. Remember to check out the companion video to this one right over there where I talk about the movies of phase four. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much.